to a lot of people, tattoos are a lot of different things. There's a lot of different meanings to it. For me, it's a way for me to kind of be able to remember a moment uh, in time when I got that tattoo. You know, each one of my tattoos kind of symbolized something and even if it didn't, it, it gives me a flashback to the time that I got it and like what was happening in my, in my life at the time. So looking back at like all of my tattoos, I used to regret a lot of my tattoos only because I wanted to get something bigger or you know, like I could have filled up the space a lot better. But a good friend of mine reminded me that, you know, all the tattoos that I have reminds me of that time period and I shouldn't, you know, just like your past, you should never regret it. You know, you should use it as a lesson and you should look back on it and move forward from there. I did think about lasering off a lot of my, my sleeves and stuff, but you know, I keep it there now because it's for me to remember that time period when I did get the tattoo and what it meant to me at the time. The meanings always change, you know, because as you get older, you get wiser and things don't really play out the way that they used to, but it's always good to look back on that time and go, man, I was stupid or like, you know, oh, that was a good time in my life or things like that. The first tattoo I ever got was my tiger. And the reason I got it, again, because it was just a flash off the wall, but it, it, it was the, the year that I was born. And my dad was a tiger as well, so it, it was almost like a double meaning, you know? Like, he's a tiger, I'm a tiger, my first tattoo is a tiger, so it kind of just all made sense. But yeah, I, I ended up going with the same artist who did my tiger, and we did the phoenix on my arm. So he did the outline on the phoenix uh, when I was probably about 16. And then I had gotten in trouble with the law, you know, and I got locked up, and so we were never able to really finish it. And so it was, it kind of stayed like unfinished. And I got it to kind of represent like, it doesn't matter how many times you fall, you just gotta get up and just fucking soar, you know, get out of the ashes and just be majestic as fuck. The next tattoo that I got, so it was the third one, is a Hanya mask that's on my forearm. At the time, when I did get it, it, you know, it really, touched home for me because of the situation that I was in. So I was like, dude, I'm gonna get this Hanya mask to kind of represent like this event in my life. After the Hanya mask, I kind of wanted to get my whole arm like sleeved together because it was all pieced at the time. So another buddy of mine was working out of his garage. So he ran all the line work for the sleeve. And then a lot of it is just black now. And then on the back side of my arm is actually a silhouette of a rose. So it's a black rose. It's gonna sound really weird, but it's actually because I like Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask is a gangster, you know, he'd be throwing roses at everybody. So I wanted to get a rose on the back of my arm. I, I wish I had like a deeper meaning for that, but I don't. It's just because I like Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Moon. The next tattoo that I have, it's actually a red arowana. So it's a super red arowana. Uh, I've always kept fishes since I was 15. And I, my, the first fish tank I ever got was a 55 gallon freshwater tank. And I put a bunch of flower horns in there with uh, an arowana. It was a silver arowana because, you know, we, we can't get the other, uh, the, the rare arowanas here in the States. But I, I got that fish because it was like a lucky fish. And it, it was one of those things where you get for like good luck and fortune. And it was just like, you know, a really beautiful, gorgeous fish. The hand tattoos are probably my favorite tattoos on my body, only because it's seen most of the times, so it doesn't matter what I wear. My mentor, Tango, actually gifted me my hand tattoo when I quit my job. And for me, you know, a hand tattoo represents like no going back, right? It's called a job stopper for a reason. When I was getting into the tattoo industry, my main goal was to quit my job and become a tattoo artist full time. And when I was able to do that, you know, I wanted to get a hand tattoo to kind of represent that there's no going back, you know? So I got a skull on my hand to represent the death of my job. There's actually one cherry blossom on there, and that's the only cherry blossom I have on my entire body. And it's representative of like, you know, a, a new life, a new start, because that's what cherry blossoms mean. A lot of people ask, why do I have like the, the skull upside down? It's actually supposed to be a mask. There's a quote that, pretty much says like, you're always yourself when you're behind a mask because there's no judgment of who you are. And so that's why I have the skull in like a mask form, you know, and it looks cool as shit. On the same hand, I actually have uh, finger tattoos. First uh, finger tattoo that I got was a monkey. It's an outline of a monkey on my uh, ring finger. The Romans believed that the ring finger had the uh, vein that went to your heart. So it's the vein of love. So that's why you get, when you get married, that's, that's where you put the ring. The monkey represents my lady and my daughter because they're both born on the year of the monkey and they both go to my heart. The other fingers, I have a paper crane. For me, the paper crane represents hope. When you have a thousand paper cranes, uh, you can make a wish. 
And I've always believed in, you know, creating your own destiny. And if you carry around your own paper crane, you'll, you'll never be one paper crane short of making a wish. So that's why I have a paper crane on me and that's why I love the, the reason behind paper cranes. The other fingers have a paper plane and a paper boat. Those tattoos represent being humble. It doesn't matter how well you do in life, how many like cool things you have. In the beginning when you're, when you're kids, you know, uh, the only thing you had was a paper plane and a paper boat. And it's to remind myself to always stay humble, to remember where I came from and to never feel like you're better than anybody else. So this wolf is done by one of my uh, favorite artists. He's a friend of mine as well. Uh, his name is uh, Seng Zen. He's uh, based out of LA. When I was growing up, you know, we've always had dogs. And when I was single, I was kind of like lonely. So I, I wanted a best friend. And so I got a Husky because I was, I was very active. And I, you know, I, I ran and, you know, I go camping and like all that other stuff. He was literally my best friend, you know. He, he was my wingman. When I first met my lady, he actually helped me on our, our first date and uh, we were watching a movie on the couch and he jumped on the couch next to her and kind of like nudged her and she actually like flew into like my, my arms and you know, I put my arm around her, it was so smooth. He's really like my best friend. That's why I have him on my right hand because he's my right hand man. Right now, uh, Matt, uh, check him out on Instagram, he's very uh, talented, talented artist. He's uh, doing ESSJ on my fingers. I was raised on the east side of San Jose, Tully McLaughlin. You guys know where that's at, you know? It's the epicenter. The other visible tattoo that I have on me is going to be uh, my neck tattoo. I have a angel on my neck that's blindfolded. And I wanted it to represent that, like, you know, the truth is blind. Your truth's not my truth and, you know, vice versa. So a lot of people are going to judge you based on what they believe to be true, but that's not necessarily what it is, you know? So I'm tatted up and a lot of people always assume that like, you know, I'm a dangerous person or I'm gonna, you know, steal from you and like all that other stuff. But, you know, the person that is, you know, going to church every Sunday may not be like the best person in the world either. So you shouldn't judge anybody on anything, you know, just find out who they are. And, you know, that's why I just be friendly, you know? My back tattoo is actually done by uh, my mentor, Tango. It's a demon that's holding a severed head with severed heads around its waist, holding a big ass machete. Growing up, you know, there's there's been a lot of times where I've had misfortunes and I've had, uh, you know, people do me wrong and I just felt like I was the underdog. And through all of that, um, I feel like I beat that and I, be, I was on top. So the demon is me and all of my past, you know, trauma or my past uh, problems are the, the severed heads. And it's a reminder to myself that like, it doesn't matter what happens in your life, the downfalls, the negatives, uh, you always have to stand tall and be that demon and, you know, just slay those heads, you know? There's a poem on the other side of my back called Desiderata, which is Latin for the desired things, right? And a lot of people don't really know this about me, but growing up, I was actually uh, addicted to meth for two years. It was freshman year and sophomore year of high school. And, oh my God, I've never been at a, more of a low in my life. I used to have such a negative outlook on life. I used to be angry all the time, you know, like, I think that's what caused me to get in trouble uh, with the law and like, you know, just people in general. I actually kicked the habit, like, you know, cold turkey, which was very hard to do. And a lot of people say that, like, that's, that's very rare, especially to do it cold turkey. I didn't go to rehab or anything. It was just, I woke up one morning and I, was going crazy and I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, dude, this, this something's gotta change. Reading that poem actually opened up a lot of like insight for me and I just realized a lot of things, like my head just clicked. So I have that poem tattooed on me to kind of represent like, this is one of the things that got me out of a dark place. I wanted to, to represent a, a part of my life, but you keep it in the back because it's a, your past. You know, you never want to dwell on it, you never want to look on at it, but it's always there to remind you like, hey, this is where you came from. Above that uh, tattoo is actually the tattoo that made me become a tattoo artist. And that's my daughter's name. It was in September, I had gone to Tango to get my daughter's name tattooed on the back of my, my neck. And that was when I had asked them what it takes to become a tattoo artist. Is it something that I'd be able to get into? And he told me, you know, like, if you give me 100%, you know, you can become a tattoo artist. And to me, I've always gone with the saying, like, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. So, you know, you may be more talented than me, but, you know, you're not going to outwork me. As long as you keep working and you just keep focusing on yourself and your progress, 
then you're gonna make it, you know, as long as you just keep pushing. But yeah, that's one of the tattoos that got me to where I am today. Uh, if I had never gotten that tattoo, I'd, I'd probably never be a tattoo artist. The next tattoo that I have is going to be on the, the front of my body, so it's on my torso. I have a Pixiu, which is a winged foo dog. They actually represent the guardians of feng shui. They're also um, good luck and fortune. Uh, they actually eat gold. So I got it on the front of my body so that whatever energy comes into my life, I always want to make sure that it's good energy. And it basically like protects all the energy that comes my way. So I have my leg pretty much fully blasted. I did it in two days back to back, but I flew out to Indonesia for it. I went to uh, Lumina. My first tattoo was a tiger and I, I always felt like I didn't do that tiger justice because it's, it's a pretty small tiger. So I knew that I wanted to get a big ass realism tiger on my, my thigh. And a lot of people ask me like, oh, it's such a cool piece, you know, why don't you have it like lower so that people can see it when you're wearing shorts. And again, it's one of those things where it's like, that, that tiger is for me, you know, like it, I, as long as I see it, I'm okay with it. I don't need to show everybody else the tiger. But on the inner thigh is actually a Buddha looking out. And my mom and my grandma are super religious, you know. My, my grandma was a monk. She's been like vegan since she was 14. I remember when I used to have bad dreams, my grandma would always have me recite, you know, Namo Aida Fuck. And to this day, it doesn't matter if I'm walking down a dark alley and I'm scared, I'll still, I'll still recite it, you know? And my mom, she's always been the one to kind of take me to like temples and things like that. So I wanted to get a Buddha on me to represent like my grandma and my mom. Going down from that, I have a uh, temple, again, to kind of accentuate the uh, Buddha. And then on the outside of my leg, is, on the calf, is a crying geisha. To me, a lot of people will always see the good side in life and they'll never see the struggle. You know, they'll see the beauty, they see the makeup that's on top of everything, but they never see the struggle behind, you know, the success. They never see the struggle behind the hustler. They never see the back end of it. And that's why I wanted to show her crying because it shows the struggles of the hustle. So to me, tattoos are basically a story. It means a lot of things to a lot of different people, but for you personally, it's gonna mean a lot more. My tattoos represent either a time of my life or you know, an event that happened or something that I wanted to represent. So when I look back at all of my tattoos, I can remember specifically you know, why I got the tattoo, what was happening in my life at the time, and what it represented to me. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I love tattoos and the tattoo culture is not everybody has the same meaning for their tattoos and everything's gonna be personal. It's one of the most selfish things that you can do because you know when you come into a tattoo shop, you get that tattoo for you and you only, it's not for anybody else. That's why I love tattoos.